Thank you for joining us on Strength for the Journey. Strength for the Journey is a radio program designed to strengthen the believer for the days that lie ahead. We have a saying here at Strength for the Journey that truth is the fuel for the journey. Applying the truth will give you strength for the journey. This is the most important thing in our life right now is to gather the truth, absorb the truth, hold the truth, uh, keep the truth, and uh, we need to be able to discern a lie and discern the lies of the enemy. The Bible says that the, the devil is a thief and he is a liar and he's the father of lies. So we have to be able to discern the voice of the Lord and the voice of the enemy in our life. We have a website. It's called strength with a number four, the journey.com at strength for the journey.com. We have a number of articles that have been written and these radio programs. Uh, this one, if you're listening by shortwave radio, It's uh, program number 25. If you want to go to the website and re-listen to the program, it's on a tab called uh, S4TJ Radio. And there's also other, uh, there's a link also on a crusade that we had last fall. And we're going to be scheduling another crusade this fall in November in Panama. And actually we're going to have a smaller crusade next month. Um, We have... A friend of mine is going to be bringing a number of tracks, like about probably 6,000 tracks down, and we're going to just go ministering out on the streets and uh, go where the people are. So uh, we're excited about the things that God is doing here in Panama. Uh, Tonight we're going to be talking about our minds and that we need to guard our minds. The Bible says in, in Proverbs that we need to guard our heart, that we need to keep thy heart with all diligence, for out of it are the issues of life. That that there is a keeping, there's a guarding. The word keep is comes from a a word it's not sar, it's uh it means to guard in the sense of protecting or maintaining or obeying and or to watch and to preserve. And this is something that we all need to do right now more than ever because the enemy is um, is out there like a roaring lion, the Bible says, seeking whom he may devour. And it's we've talked about this in other programs, but the word is may, not can, and may implies permission. He's looking for our obedience to him to give us permission to devour us. And this is why we have to be able to discern the voice of the enemy from the voice of God and the Holy Spirit. And... And this is one of the first things that I really um, was pursuing when I just after I gave my heart to the Lord because I didn't want to be deceived. And and I just asked God, I said, well, God, how do I know it's you speaking? And he said back to me, he said, eliminate the devil. And so I began to think about the areas of my life that I was deceived. And I realized that there is a voice of a deceiver out there. And as I began to examine the things and areas of my life where I knew deception was coming in, I began to eliminate those areas. And so tonight we're going to be talking about how to identify and and how to eliminate. You know, there's um, spiritual warfare is, uh, in many ways, almost like natural warfare. There was a a fellow that I learned a lot through in my early walk with the Lord, but he said something very interesting one time. He said that... uh, the warfare of the enemy is just like the warfare that you are taught in the military that you have to identify your your you have to identify your enemy you have to locate your enemy and you have to eradicate your enemy so there's three processes i always remember this identify locate and eradicate and the devil wants us to believe that we don't even have an enemy he wants to make most people believe he doesn't even exist and so if he can make us believe that he doesn't even exist, then we will never identify him. And we won't realize where he is to be able to eradicate him. So the first thing is to know that we have an enemy. We do have an enemy, and he is the father of lies. He's come to steal, kill, and destroy. And his fruit can be discerned. It says that you'll know the spirit by the fruit. 
So we need to be able to identify the fruit of him so that we can identify where he's operating. So one of the things that's very important for us is, first of all, to know that we have an enemy. Secondly, to know where he is. And and then we can uh, uh, eradicate him or, or get rid of him. The Bible says in Second Chronicles, or sorry, Second Corinthians ten five, it says, "Casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of, knowledge of God, and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ." And as I was thinking about this scripture this week, I was pondering on this captivity, and I was almost like imagining, like uh, you know, when we get born again. When we get saved, uh, it's like a new sheriff comes in town. And this sheriff, uh, the sheriffs before may have allowed uh, the bad guys to kind of rule in town and cause all sorts of problem and bring fear into the town because maybe they were subjected to their fear. But, you know, when Jesus comes on the scene, there's a new sheriff in town. And this one doesn't allow the bad guys to reign. In fact, he wants to kick them out. And you can imagine it also like uh, it's like a guard at a gate that you're checking IDs when a thought comes in, taking captive every thought. And it's like a checkpoint. It's like, okay, where did this thought come from? Um, Is this of God or is this of the enemy? Is it obedient to Christ or is it disobedient to Christ? And One of the things that I began to ponder, I spent a number of years um, attempting to get into medical school. I uh, went to, got my my degree in biology. I went and worked for a medical school for a couple of years. I worked in the uh, psychiatry department. And uh, and as I began to think about this thought, uh, because I was trying to just discern God's voice, and many of us are kind of waiting for this booming voice out of heaven to speak to us, and and it's like this, uh, uh, you know, like you're watching the the, uh, the Ten Commandments movie with Charlton Heston, and this voice comes out of nowhere and, and just speaks to us out of the sky. And and I just, as I was trying to discern God's voice, um, it didn't come that way. It gets came like a thought, like it was a thought, but I it wasn't really my thought. And... And I started to think about something I never thought about. And, you know, all the research and things that I was involved in, I never saw any research on what is a thought in the first place. How can you close your mouth and say hello to yourself without speaking out loud? What is that voice that we're hearing when we're not even speaking, but we're just thinking and it's our voice talking to us? And as I was pondering this thought, I feel like the Holy Spirit was speaking to me and he was saying that in the same dimension that I say hello to myself in my own voice, in my mind, he's saying that's the same dimension that I speak to you on or the devil speaks to you on. And so as I began to think about this even more, I I just started to think about about the thoughts and, and where ideas came from. And I'm sure many of us have looked back in our life and we maybe we did something really stupid and boy that was a stupid idea what I mean I just got myself in trouble you know where'd that thought come from and and when we look back and we realize um, there is a voice that we have listened to in the past that has got us in trouble that has given us bad advice or bad counsel uh, bad ideas we need to be able to discern that was the voice of the enemy that's come to steal, kill, and destroy. And so as we begin to eliminate that voice that's come to steal, kill, and destroy, that the voice of the Lord begins to get stronger and more clear. And I kind of looked at it like this. It's like having um, a room full of radios playing, and and you don't really know which radio station's the right one, but but if you kind of look in and look and examine the fruit, of a station, so to speak, a voice, and examine the fruit of that voice in your life, and you say, you know what, this voice has caused me nothing but problems. My obedience to this voice has only brought torment, 
or um, problems, problem people, I need to eliminate that voice. I need to turn that thing off. I need to eliminate what I know is not God. And I believe part of the problem that many Christians have today, they want to hear God's voice, but they still have another voice that they're being obedient to. There's like having two masters. It's it's like you have to determine in your heart that I don't want any other voice in my life. I want to get, eliminate every every thought. I want to bring into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. I no longer want to take one step forward in life and two steps backwards. I want every step that I take to know that God is leading me. And the only way that that can happen is to eliminate what you know is not God. Eliminate every voice that you know is not obedient to Christ. And this is the step-by-step procedure that I began to go through a number of years ago just because I wanted to know God's voice. I was tired of making bad choices. I'd lived 29 years of my life for the devil, and I didn't know the Lord. And I realized that I wanted my life to go and be productive, and I wanted what I pursued in life to actually be achieved I, I felt like many of my goals, I was just ever, they always just stayed out of my reach. And I felt like, you know, I just, I, I need God more than, and I, and I guess that's where we all have to get to. It's like we have to get to a point where we know that we, re, we need Him, and only He can direct us, and only He, um, and, and following His voice is what's going to make our life productive and get, make our life fruitful. There's another scripture that comes to my mind here as well, and um, it's 1 Corinthians 2.16. It says, For who has known the mind of the Lord, that he may instruct him? But we have the mind of Christ. And in 1 Peter 1.13, it says, Wherefore, gird up the loins of your mind, be sober, and hope to the end for the grace that is to be brought unto you, at the revelation of Jesus Christ, as obedient children, not fashioning yourselves according to the former lusts in your ignorance. But as he which has called you to be holy, so be ye holy in all conver- manner of conversation, for it is written, Be ye holy, for I am holy. So there's a, there's a des- deciding line that we have to come to that we realize in our former ways that we let the lusts of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life direct our steps and guide our thoughts and guide our actions. And God is saying it's time to be as obedient children, not fashioning yourself according to the former lusts in your ignorance. See, God wants to get us where we're not ignorant. The Bible also says to be not ignorant of Satan's devices, that he goes about as a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. So he says that he doesn't want us to be ignorant. And our problem is that if we don't pursue the truth, a lie will always pursue us. That we will not know the truth unless we desire, unless we hunger for the truth. The Bible says also, Jesus said, that if we hunger and thirst after righteousness, we will be filled. And this is the point where we have to hunger for the truth and not be satisfied with the lies of our former ways. Um, In Philippians 2.5, it says, Let this mind be in you, which is also in Christ Jesus. And I think about the thoughts. Allow these thoughts. Because you think the mind of Christ, if we have the mind of Christ, then we have the ability to have his thoughts, that his thoughts can be our thoughts because we have the mind of Christ. But we have to let this mind be in us. We have to allow it. We have to allow his thoughts to be our thoughts and his ways to be our ways. Because if his his thoughts aren't our thoughts, his ways will neither be our ways because everything begins in our thought life. Everything begins with an idea. And that's why it's so important for all of us to capture every thought almost like a filter, like, okay, this is coming through, it's going to get filtered if it's not obedient to Christ. That, that there's a, uh, 
uh, a, a, like a obedient filter on the outside of our ears. And you know, sometimes these thoughts come to our mind and, uh, and, and we actually think it's our thoughts. And we think we just take credit for these thoughts. But, you know, if, if this is the dimension in our spirit man that we're hearing our spirit man, we're speaking with our spirit and we're hearing with our spirit inside of us, the inner man, then this is the dimension where a warfare is going on. But this is, this is the battle ground for our soul. This is the big battleground for our mind. And the enemy is always out there trying to sow seeds of, of deception in our mind. So we're going to take a moment here. We're going to listen to a song. Um, I think you'll really enjoy it. It's, it's by Hillsong, and it's called All I Need Is You.
is your desire? Is He all you need? Because if you realize He's all you need, He will be found. He said that you will find me when you seek for me with all of your heart. When you search for me with all your heart, I will be found. And our problem is these days is that we have so many of the things that we think we need, but re- the reality is He is really all we need. He's only His words are eternal life. Give us eternal life. Peter rec- recognized this when Jesus turned to a lot of people who were just following Him for another meal in John chapter 6. And He said, are you going to leave me as well? And Peter said, where are we going to go, Lord? Only you have the words of life. If we realize only He has the words of life, then where else are we going to go? He's got everything. He's He is everything. And if we really seek Him with all of our heart, then He's going to be found, and He's not going to hide Himself from us. Our problem is that we are divided, that we kind of want Him, but we really don't because we kind of want to do what we want to do. And we have to decide, really just draw the line that only He has the words of life. Only He has a plan that's worth living because we're not here of our own accord. We're not here because of ourselves. We didn't create ourselves. And the truth is we can't deliver ourselves either. That only God in His mercy can deliver us from our past, from our habits, from our addictions, from our wrong desires, from our wrong thinking. Only He has the ability to do that. And the Bible says that if we will humble ourselves, that He will lift us up. That if we are prideful and arrogant, that He's going to resist us. He's going, His grace is going to resist us. His grace will be resisted by us. And we need His grace. We need His mercy. And that's why we have to humble ourselves. We have to recognize our need. This is, this is so key that we always get what we want. We will pursue what we really want. If we want to do wrong, we will find a way. We will go out of our way to do what we know isn't wrong. We will hide in the dark. We will make sure nobody knows about it. We will pursue our heart's desire. And that's why we have to really determine what do we really want. If we look back on our life and we say, you know what, what is these decisions that I have made in my past, what have they really done for me? What have they what benefit has it brought in my life? Where's the fruit? If I was on my deathbed right now and I look back at my life, what have I really accomplished? Did I really do the will of God? Jesus said, Not everyone that says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom. And I look at this like this as the Lord, Lord is not everyone who says the sinner's prayer. Let's just put it in that little category that calls out on the name of the Lord that says that, well, Jesus, didn't we do all these wonderful things and all this, this stuff? He says, he says, not everyone says, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven, but he that does the will of my Father. So this is what is so critical for all of us right now is to find out what is the will of God for my life. And we won't know the will of God until we pursue the will of God that we have to pursue His voice. We have to pursue His words to us so that we can follow Him. There's there's a scripture that has just jumped out at me recently, and it's John 10, 27. And it says, My sheep hear my voice. And the next words are really profound, but it says, And I know them, and they follow me. And so sandwiched in between Knowing God's voice and being obedient to Him is a blessing that He says, I know you. And this is what we all want to hear when we stand before Him is that He knows us. Because there's many that He will say, I know you not, or I never knew you. And, well, Lord, I thought I knew you. So it's not a matter of us claiming to know the Lord 
that our salvation is based on. It's whether He knows us. And this is one of the things I think is so critical for all of us to really know God's voice, discern His voice, eliminate the voice that we know is the deceiver, and be obedient to what we know God is speaking to us. So this is a very critical thing. One of the scriptures that I want to speak about here before the time is out here, we have, uh, it's Romans chapter 8. And it says in verse 6, it's, uh, verse 5, it says, For they that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh, but they that are after the Spirit, the things of the Spirit. For to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Because the carnal mind is enmity with against God, for it is not subject to the law of God, neither indeed can be. So they that are in the flesh cannot please God. So if our cry is to please God, then we have to get out of the flesh. We have to get a carnal mind to be eliminated from our mindset. And this is where the enemy puts thoughts because he works through the lust of the eyes, the lust of the flesh, and the pride of life. And so these are the battlegrounds that we have to fight. And we have to be victorious in this area. But the key is to be after the things of God. And um, Romans 12, 2 says, And be not conformed to this world, world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is good and acceptable and the perfect will of God. So this is a transformation that has to take place in our life, that the old mindset, the old thinking has to be eliminated. So thank you so much for joining us on Strength for the Journey. Again, our website is strength, with the number four, thejourney.com, and we'll see you next time.